Hello everyone and welcome back to another impressions video. I'm trying to catch up here with some of the latest games I beat. Uh, I know I have a backlog of games that I beat last year that I want to talk about, but I wanted to take advantage of March. You know, March is kind of like known as um, the Mario month due to the Marchio or March, uh, March 10th day. So I figured, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's talk about a Mario game that, that I beat recently. Um, lately, I've been very busy and making uh, or take, you know, uh, make, make an advantage of the, uh, of the uh, Nintendo Switch uh, online service uh, now that they added the uh, Game Boy, uh, you know, games. And so I decided to go after Super Mario Land 2, a game that, um, you know, just kind of like my background info. I don't, I never really owned the original Game Boy, but I did play it. Uh, borrow it from uh, a couple of friends, you know, back then, uh, back in the day, and it wasn't until um, around 2013, I think, when um, I bit the game on the Nintendo uh, Nintendo 3DS virtual or eShop uh, service, virtual console service uh, uh, from the 3DS. So um, ever since, uh, you know, I wanted to replay the game, and this was a perfect opportunity uh, to um, to go back and explore Super Mario Land 2, which. Uh, it's a great improvement over the first one. I mean, it goes without saying that uh, I did an impressions video on the first Super Mario Land game, um, you know, not uh, last year, on, you know, on my channel, and it was an eye-opening, uh, kind of like experience comparing the uh, the differences. You know, Super Mario Land 2 is a, a much polished, a more, a much more advanced um, game in its own right. Uh, so that was a that was a good. Um, Co contrast there to see how how far Nintendo was able to uh, do things in in a in, in a span of some short you know two or three years in uh, development, but yeah, Super Mario Land 2: Six Golden Coins that's the official name of the game, and uh, it was uh, the, uh, published by Nintendo and uh, developed by them obviously and released in 1992. Um, uh, it's a sequel to Super Mario Land, and you know the uh, the the story is pretty uh, pretty pr pretty nice because it's you know basically the story of Mario trying to reclaim his castle, which has been taken over by none other than Wario, which is you know this game makes uh, Wario's uh, debut uh, as a as a villain or as a character overall for Nintendo, so uh, a pretty staple moment considering Wario kind of became like a. Um, like a main character for Nintendo games and he has been featured in a multitude of other Nintendo games such as you know the Mario Party games the Mario Kart games and and he has his own line of of games too you know with the WarioWare game so uh, an interesting appearance by um, by Wario there and uh, who you know he used a like a magic seal to you know to block the entrance of Mario's castle and the only way to open it up is to find six golden coins that are um, scattered throughout the um, what they call the Mario Land, and uh, you have to rescue kind of like the kings within the the land in order to you know break their curse, so to speak, in order to get the golden coins. And then once you have all six golden coins, you can uh, open the uh, the gates of the castle and confront a uh, Wario. So it's an interesting concept, uh, pretty um, you know pretty simple for being a platforming game, obviously. Uh, but moving on to the uh, the graphics and sound, um, you know, Super Mario Land 2 features you know, much more advanced graphics than its predecessor. Um, it it really makes a or takes advantage of the uh, the Game Boy's um, you know limited ca capabilities to be to be honest. Um, you know, the graphics, the, uh, the 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 backgrounds, the sprite work, everything is way more detailed when compared to the first game so that's something good and i absolutely love the art direction of, of, of this game there's just something about late 80s and early 90s nintendo um that i really really just love their art direction the you know the, the way they did things you know the character design the environment the backgrounds uh, it just has this magical feeling and i'm sure nostalgia plays a huge factor because you know I, I you know back then i was a little kid and super mario super mario world is one of my favorite games of all time so there are similarities in terms of you know the art direction and just the overall presentation of the game that uh really uh you know hits a note for me and uh that's great so uh as far as the uh, the soundtrack you know the you know there's a limited Hardware, you know, with the Game Boy, but you know the soundtrack is uh, it's pretty good. Uh, some uh, some great tunes um, in, and sound effects that are typical to the to the Mario uh, games. So uh, everything was uh, pretty pretty good in, in that uh, regard. And then of course the gameplay, 
Um, you know, that's where, you know, typically the Mario games shine, you know, they're simple platforming games, you know, uh, you run uh, sideways and, uh, you know, you uh, jump and that's pretty much it. You do have power ups and, in, in, you know, in the game uh, that, um, uh, you know, there are, there are some new uh, power ups here that include, uh, I think, I believe a, a carrot uh, that turns Mario into a bunny, uh, which, you know, makes you jump higher and kind of float in the air a little bit. Um, there's also the fire flower, which is a classic one, um, and and you know, and, and there are some other power ups too that are, are part of this game um, that you know make the gameplay a little bit more uh, varied. Um, but overall, you know, this is just this side-scrolling platformer, um, you know, that has you move through different levels, jumping over obstacles, uh, jumping over enemies, and collecting uh, power ups. So uh, the game has uh, six wor uh, six worlds, as I noted before. I personally enjoyed all of them. I think they all they all have their own theme. So there's a tree zone. There's a, uh, a macro. They call it the macro zone, which is like a toy themed environment uh, with levels that uh, feature like oversized like toys and enemies. Uh, there's a space zone, which is uh, a, 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 takes uh, place in outer space with levels featuring like zero, zero gravity. And the zero gravity feature just gives it a, a, a little bit of variety in terms of, um, you know, the gameplay overall. Um, and uh, the, the boss of this world, by the way, is uh, Tatanga, which is the uh, the uh, one of the bosses from uh, Super Mario Land. So that was a pretty cool, uh, I guess, comeback on, on his behalf, if you, if you want to call it that. Then there's the pumpkin zone, which is kind of like said as a Halloween theme, like an eerie, scary area. I love the art direction in this um, uh, in, in this area and I really enjoyed the uh, the boss which is the uh, like a uh, hunting uh, uh, witch uh, that, that was uh, pretty cool and then I, I think there's also a Mario zone um, with levels playing homage to, to Mario uh, with a giant version of you know classic Mario enemies and other elements and there is the uh, turtle zone which is an un underwater level I, I typically don't care too much about underwater levels uh, but you know it, it's got to be there obviously it's a Mario game and, and so forth um, you know they you know and so you know it's a it's a typical occurrence in Mario games so uh, the the underwater levels have to be there and you know that that's where the turtle zone um, you know takes place uh, the cool thing is that you don't necessarily have to follow a certain order um, to play the worlds um, um, you know you can uh, you can kind of like jump back and forth um, between them for the most part anyway so um, you know I just you know completed all six uh, got the uh, six golden coins and then that's how you gain gain entrance to the castle to uh, face and defeat Wario so uh, overall it's a short game um, if you run through it uh, you can definitely beat the game in you know under you know five hours pretty easily um, uh, you know I, I, I have to admit you know uh, I, I made use of some safe states here and there you know i already beat this game the normal way in the past so uh, i got nothing to prove myself but uh the game does feature um the, the different ways uh, for you to collect uh you know uh lives if you will at the end of each level uh if you ring the bell um you can you can get like a mini game option where you know you can you can gain more uh you know power ups or lives uh, which is uh, pretty cool and uh yeah the game itself it's not uh it's not very hard to be honest um the game saves after each level if i'm not mistaken which is something new um so yeah the uh, the game itself is not very hard it's not very long either but uh, in my opinion it does have like a, a magic to it that again you know it, it must be my nostalgia uh you know kicking in for for me to pass verdict but uh this is one of my favorite mario games um you know it just you know straight you know it really uh, you know has a place in my heart uh, even though i didn't really experience it that much when i was younger uh when I play, when I'm playing this game as an adult, you know, I can see those elements from you know the early '90s that uh, Nintendo did, in my opinion, incredibly well with games like Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart. Just a, a very unique and uh, focused art direction that I personally enjoyed uh, a lot. So, I think this is a a great classic platformer, a great a great classic Mario game that really stood the test of time uh, very uh, very well. Uh, the gameplay, the graphics, the sound, they're all enjoyable and very and very balanced. So if you guys um, want to experience a classic Mario game, just make sure you, you, you check it out. So uh, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you all later. Take it easy.